Hi guys, Prophetess Caldwell here, founder of House of Many Mantles Global. Um, thank you for subscribing to my YouTube channel. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for liking our videos. I want to tell you something very briefly that a lot of people miss. If the word of God is blessing you, and not even just on my channel, but anywhere where you're being fed spiritual food, do you know that we are sometimes robbing ourselves of certain blessings by not sharing back into the man or woman of God that is teaching us? So listen, according to the biblical principles of Galatians 6 and 6, um, him that is taught in the word, let him communicate uh, onto him that teacheth. So if, if you know, I'm sharing the, the word of God to you and it's been a blessing, you've been delivered, you're going through deliverance, you're blessed by it. Um, you're growing spiritually, uh, then the, the word of God, according to the biblical principles of Galatians 6, 6 and 6, we are obligated to share the word of God back to the teacher. That means not only sowing back into the ministry, but also share with other people. So why don't you do me a favor? Take this video and all the other videos that have blessed your life and share them with your friends, share them with your family, share them on all your social media outlets, okay? And according to 1 Corinthians 9 and 11, it says that if we sow by, if the, if the minister sows their, sows you spiritually, uh, you know, spiritual food, how much more than to sow back into me your carnal things? So listen, if you are just someone passing by and you were blessed to God be praised, but if you are someone that is being fed week after week from the different teachings that we're doing, the different uh, videos that we're producing in the school of, of deliverance and the school, the dream school, then by all means, we are obligated to give back, okay? We are obligated by those biblical principles to share the word of God and to sow our carnal good things back into the teacher. So listen, as you watch this word and it bless you real good on tonight as we're doing deliverance, please do not hold up any more of your blessings by not sharing back into the teacher, by not sharing back into the ministries that are sowing into you. And as a second, second Corinthians nine also teaches us, Paul teaches us how to give, how to, uh, you know, give in offerings. So if you are doing an offering, the Bible also teaches in second Corinthians nine, that we are to give as God uh, puts it in our heart. So whatever the Lord puts in your heart, please be obedient. Do not be fearful. Do not be afraid to give what God has said to give because he says he will give you grace, that he will give you sufficient grace for to sustain you. So be blessed and I love you. Goodbye.
Good evening, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm so excited to be here with you once again. Let's just go into prayer. Father God, we just thank you. We open up with your open arms, with your welcoming. We just open up with your love. Father, we just open up with your commission. We open up, oh God, with repentance. Father, we just ask that you forgive us of our sins. Forgive us of our thoughts. Forgive us of our imaginations. Forgive us of our deeds. Anything that we have done that was not pleasing in your sight, rather by omission or commission. And Father God, we just ask that you lift us up in your arms, oh God. We just ask that this word come alive on tonight for the word of God is living, Father, and it is sharper than a two-edged sword, than any two-edged sword. So Father, we just pray right now that your word will come alive, hallelujah, Jesus, that your word will be sharp that your word will penetrate, that your word will prick, that your word will encourage, that your word will uplift, that your word will, uh, will edify, hallelujah, and solidify in your word. In Jesus' name we pray and we thank you. Amen and amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Welcome, Facebook. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, I'm not going to be long tonight because I know we're started, we started this fast and uh, a lot of us are exhausted. I know I'm exhausted. A lot of us are tired. <laughs> we're just, we're just tired. <laughs> uh, it's been a rough week. It's been a long month. It's just been a lot of ups and downs, topsy turvies with the economy and this weather and this heat and all this violence. It's, it can be overwhelming. So I hope tonight that this word will encourage you to, to continue on, to, you know, to continue the word of the Lord, to continue to remain steadfast. Hallelujah. Um, the Lord really didn't give me um, anything until like a couple hours ago. And I was like, Lord, what are we doing? You know, <laughs> it's getting close time. What are we doing? What's going on? What's the word? And um, he said, well, what are you doing? And I said, well, we're doing the Zechariah fast. And he said, he said, go back and read Zechariah. So I went back and I read Zechariah 8 this morning when I was at work. And oh my gosh, Zechariah blew me away. <laughs> Zechariah got so much revelation, so much prophecy, so much word of knowledge, so much word of wisdom. And so the word of the Lord tonight is um, prepare. You're going to hear a lot of this tonight. The word is prepare. The word is um, to, to have provision. And so as we prepare to partake in this fast, let us review why it is so relevant today. Where did that word come from? Where did that fast come from? Why did the Lord mention the fast in the seventh month? What is there to fast about? What's going on? What's the nature? What's surrounding this fast? Well, um, in Zechariah 8 and 1, it says, again, the word of the Lord of hosts came to me saying, thus saith the Lord of hosts, I was jealous for Zion with great jealousy, and I was jealous for her with great fury. Verse 3 says, thus saith the Lord, I am returned unto Zion and will dwell in the midst of Jerusalem, and Jerusalem shall be called a city of truth, and the mountain of the Lord of hosts, the holy mountain. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, there shall yet old men and old women dwell in the streets of Jerusalem and every man with his staff in his hand for, the, for every age. And the streets of the city shall be full of boys and girls playing in the streets thereof. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, if it be marvelous in the eyes of the remnant of this people in these days, shall it also be marvelous in my eyes saith the Lord of hosts. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, behold, I will save my people from the east country and from the west country, and I will bring them and they shall, they shall dwell in the midst of Jerusalem and they shall be my people. Hallelujah. And I will be their God in truth and in righteousness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I shall be their their God and they shall be my people. That's where that's that's one of my favorite lines to tell the Lord. Lord, I am yours and you are mine. Um, that's continued. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, let your hands be strong. Yea, that that here in these days, these words by the mouth of the prophets 
which were in the day that the foundation of the host of the Lord of hosts was laid and that the temple might be built. Verse 10, for before these days, there was no hire for man, nor any hire for beasts. Neither was there any peace to him that went out or came in because of the affliction. For I set all men, everyone against his neighbor. But now I will not be unto the residue of this people as in the former days, saith the Lord of hosts. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. For the seed shall be prosperous. The vine shall give her fruit and the ground shall give her increase and the heavens shall give their due. And I will cause the remnant of this people to possess all these things. And it shall come to pass that as ye were a curse among the heathen, O house of Judah and house of Israel, so will I save you and ye shall be a blessing. Fear not, but let your hands be strong. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, as I thought to punish you when your fathers provoked me to wrath, saith the Lord of hosts, and I repented not. Verse 15. So again, have I thought in these days to do well unto Jerusalem and to the house of Judah? Fear ye not. These are the things that ye shall do. Speak ye every man the truth to his neighbor. Execute the judgment of truth and peace in your gates. And let none of your image, your, and let none of you imagine evil in your heart against his neighbor and love no false oath for all these are things that I hate saith the Lord and the word of the Lord of hosts came unto me saying thus saith the Lord of hosts the fast of the fourth month and the fast of the fifth and the fast of the seventh and the fast of the tenth shall be the house of Judah joy and gladness and cheerful feast Therefore, love the truth and peace. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, it shall yet come to pass that there shall come people and the inhabitants of many cities and the inhabitants of one city shall go to another saying, let us go speedily to pray before the Lord and to seek the Lord of hosts. I will also, I will go also. Hallelujah. Yea, many people and strong nations shall come to seek the Lord of hosts in Jerusalem and to pray before the Lord. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. Oof. He says, in those days, thus saith the Lord of hosts, in those days it shall come to pass that 10 men shall take hold out of all the languages of the nations, even shall take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew, saying, we will go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. Oh my gosh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for this word, Father God, for opening up our ears, Father, and let our eyes and ears be enlightened to your understanding and to your teaching and to your correction and to your encouragement, in Jesus' name, amen. There's so much going on in chapter eight. We don't, I don't even know where to begin. He says, back to back, Fear not, fear not, fear not, for I shall bless, you shall be prosperous. When you start seeing these words, it, you got to pay attention. Um, the, but in verse um, 11, he says, there's a new era that is, he, he indicates there's a new era about to begin. He says, but now I will not treat the remnant of this people as in the former days, declares the Lord of hosts. I'm going to do a new thing. I'm not going to do, I'm not going to treat you. Um, like I've done before, I'm going to do a new thing. I'm not going to treat you like I treated your forefathers and the sins of your fathers. I'm going to do a new thing. And so Holy Spirit is speaking. Hallelujah. There are something very um, prominent that sticks out in, in chapter eight. And I don't know if you caught it, but it says, Zechariah called the Lord the Lord of hosts 18 times. That is more than any other chapter, any other prophet, any other book. He, he called him the Lord of hosts more than any other name that was given to the Lord in one single chapter. 18 times he says the Lord of hosts, the Lord of hosts, the Lord of hosts. 18 represents valiant men. 
It represents valiant men. When you look in the scriptures like Genesis 14 and 14, it says that when Abram heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed his trained servants, born in his own house, 318, and pursued them unto Dan. Uh, First Chronicles 26 and 9 says, and Meshulamia Mesh, Mesh, had sons and brethren, strong men, 18. Eight, whenever you see scriptures, with when it gives you the number like 18 or 318, it's talking about some, someone that was valiant, strong. So the Lord, 18 times, Zechariah is, is saying, this is not just the Lord God. And, you know, in most scriptures, most verses, you'll see where he says the, 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 the Lord the Lord God of Israel. Um, now he's the Lord God of, you know, the Lord of hosts, which is something completely different. God is about to speak on behalf of his people. He's about to speak on behalf of Israel. He's about to speak on behalf of his sons and daughters. Oh my gosh. And when he speak, it's going to be fireworks. It's not just going to be uh, a whisper, a soft spoken, a little here, a little there. He's getting ready to declare and decree a thing and he's going to seal it. Hallelujah. Uh, before when he was saying the Lord God, he was he was acknowledging himself as the God of Israel, the God of, you know, the kingdom of God. But as the Lord of hosts, this is something completely different. Hosts in itself is like talking about an army and, you know, nations upon nations upon nations. He's the Lord of hosts. That word, you can't even, that word is so big. You have to dumb it down, you know, <laughs> just to try to describe the, the Lord. And you you really can't find a word infinite enough to describe him. So um, Zechariah uses the same name for God 18 times in one chapter. But what he's saying is the Lord of the armies, the Lord of hosts. My God, uh, host is a Hebrew word for multitudes. And it means a vast array or a vast army, a very powerful army or a vast, just something that's huge, vast, is big. It's, there's, it's just innumerable. There's no way to um, declare it. There's no way to calculate it. There's no way to put it in words. And so he says, uh, the Lord of hosts, which is someone in charge of many, someone in charge of a very powerful person the niv translates the lord almighty that's still not doing it justice the the new living translation translated as the lord of armies i like the nlt version uh the lord of armies uh, and armies military forces were often described as hosts you can frighten your enemies by saying you have hosts surrounding them you have a host of police officers surrounding you there's a host arrayed against you. Israel's armies were described as hosts in, in various scriptures, um, as were their enemies. Sometimes they were outnumbered. So what's the Lord of hosts say? Now that we've established that this is not just God talking, this is the Lord of hosts. This is a vast, this is a powerful God. This is a big God that is about to avenge something or someone. And so what is he saying? Whenever you see the Lord of hosts 18 times in one chapter, this is like, you might as well say the Holy Spirit wrote it. The Lord himself wrote this and it's worth memorizing, it's worth note-taking, and it's worth looking at it, it's worth reading it, it's worth memorizing it. Um, thus says the Lord of hosts, God introduced himself with a title, declaring his power and his majesty. He is the Lord of hosts, with hosts referring to the armies of heaven. The title itself is a wake-up call. It's like, okay, hold up, the Lord of hosts, you know, what's he about to say? What, you know, he's about to get your attention some kind of way. And so you really have to break this down verse by verse by verse, which I don't have time to do. So I'm going to do it another way. The Holy Spirit gave me a shorter version to get this out. Um, another thing he says, I am zealous for Zion with great zeal. The word for zealous in the ancient Hebrew comes from the idea to become intensely red. Uh, just, you know, sometimes lighter skinned people, <clears throat> when they're really flustered, when they're really agitated and bothered, their aura turns, their whole face, their whole disposition sh shifts and it's red. 
Um, this is talking about being zealous. He, he, he gets flushed. He gets red when he even thinks about, you know, something he created, not loving him, not listening to him, not worshiping him, not adoring him, but worshiping other things, false gods. He says, I have so much zeal for you, Zion. So it has the thought of a face becoming flushed with deep emotion. The Lord, Jesus did this in the New Testament. He wept. He cried out, even when he saw and heard about um, John the Baptist, even when he heard about um, Mary and Martha's brother, uh, Lazarus, it said his face, you know, his countenance. So he, the Lord does um, express deep emotion for, for the people he loved. This shows that God is passionately concerned for us. So each time we see his name, we need to say his name. So every time Zechariah writes the Lord of armies, the Lord of hosts, it's, you have to write down what he's saying. So I took the liberty uh, and, and wrote down all the things every time he says the Lord of hosts, what he's saying. So the first, the first couple of things I gave you, the Lord of hosts, he's introducing himself. The second time he says it, he's saying that um, I, as big as I am, that's how big of a zeal I have for you. The third thing that he says when he says the Lord of hosts is I am the Lord of armies and I shall return. That's the very next thing he says after he introduces himself and how he feels. He reveals how he feels towards us. He now says, I'm going to return to you. So this shows that there's a prophecy. There's a, and, and I believe we're living in this time now because most of Zechariah's prophecies have already come to pass. So I believe that this future, this prophecy, we're actually living it now. If you look at chapter eight, which we're about to, you'll see a lot of similarities to what we're going through now. And so Zechariah says, um, the, Lord of, the Lord of hosts, uh, he's going to return. So that means he, he's left the church, which we see that now. He's been showing me visions and dreams and showing me churches places I don't even know, some I do know, where the glory has left the church. But he says, nevertheless, beloved, I'm going to return. The Lord of hosts is going to return. The Lord of the armies is going to return. And when I return, this is what's going to happen. Uh, the fourth thing he says is that many, many will be amazed, but that doesn't mean he won't or can't do it. Hallelujah. Many will be amazed. Matter of fact, He's saying, oh, I skipped one. Number four, the fourth thing he says, when you see his name, the Lord of hosts, he's saying, there shall be life in the streets again. You got to go back and look at it. When you look at it, he's talking. When you go back and look at the, the, the verse, he's talking. He is, he is talking. He is speaking. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. The fourth verse. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. There shall yet old men and old women. He is talking. And so what I did was highlight what he's saying. But you got to go back and read this. He is talking. He A lot of times people say the Lord is speaking, but they don't tell you what he's saying. <laughs> Tonight, we're going to tell you what the Lord is saying. The, the Lord is saying, the Lord of hosts is saying that there's going to be mess in the streets, which it is already, all this looting all this vandalizing, all this starting fires and setting people's business on fire. It's going to be mess in the streets. He said, but when I return, when my spirit returns back to the to my people, because right now it does, a lot of people feel like the Lord has left them. A lot of people feel like the Lord has deserted them. It's not that he's left or deserted. He's standing by. And when the Lord stands by, it's because he's about to pronounce judgment. He's about to proclaim. He's about to let angels go forth and measure with the measuring rod, like he told Zechariah in chapter one. I'm going to measure the sin, the bread of thereof, the, the length. I'm going to go see about this city to see if this is what I'm saying it is. He, if, so when he's standing by, he's watching. He says, oh, but when I get ready to speak, he says the Lord of armies is going to return. I'm not just returning. I'm going to return a vast army. I'm going to return as the Lord of hosts. Oh, rich shit got about. Meaning everybody's going to feel his anointing. Everybody's going to know that, that God is speaking. Everybody's going to know that the hand of the Lord is upon a thing. When he speaks, everybody gives him reverence. I don't care what religion they are. They're going to say the Lord did it. Uh, many will be amazed, but
but the, but that doesn't mean he won't or can't do it. He says, you're going to be astonished. Just because you're astonished, does that mean I can't do it? Because you think, oh, that's too much for me to do? Do you think that's going to be too much for me? He's saying, no, just because you're shocked by it doesn't mean um, thank you. Um, he says, just because I'm going to be amazed by it, or just because people are going to be astonished by it, does not mean that God can't do it. It doesn't mean that God won't do it. It doesn't mean that He's not going to do it. The sixth time He's the, the sixth time Zechariah says His name, He says. Um, I'm going to reiterate who I am. So he's going to say it again. The Lord of hosts. I For I am, thus saith the Lord of hosts. Thus saith. People have to be careful saying, thus saith the Lord. Um, I'm very careful. When the Lord shows me something, I know it did not come from my heart, my gut, my mind, or my imagination, but it came from the Lord. And so I'm careful to say something is not God, something is God. But here, Zechariah is saying, thus saith the Lord. And he reiterates that he is the Lord of hosts. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. I will say the, the seventh thing he says, number seven, number seven, completion. He says, I will save my people from the east and west countries. Y'all see this mess going on and y'all know who, 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 are, who are the eastern cultures um, aside from us. It, it includes Asia and the Middle East. They're constantly... Um, something is going on where we have to defend ourselves or we're having to watch what they're doing and they're trying to concoct something you know over there um and and while the western cultures includes places like south and north america european countries you know like us and so god says i'm going to protect my people uh those of us who are on the west i'm gonna protect you from the east those of you on the east i'm gonna protect you from those on the west i'm gonna provide protection says the lord of hosts then he says the eighth thing he says is your hands will be strengthened. Those who can hear the prophets of the Lord of hosts. He says, if you can hear me, if you can get in this word and hear what I'm saying through this word, if you can receive uh, true prophets of God, he says, I'm going to strengthen you. You're going to be strong. Your hands are going to be strong. You're, going, you're not going to faint during these turmoilous, these turmoilous times, but you're going to actually be stronger hallelujah jesus your hands will be strengthened um y'all know that this, this harmonizes with scripture this harmonizes with the word of jesus in matthew eleven fifteen. he that has an ear let him hear he says again in mark 4 29 and again through to through, through the apostle john in revelation 2 and 3 through 2 through 3 he who has an ear let him hear the ninth thing he says the lord of hosts will build temples the temple will be built and its foundations will be built from the original teachings of the prophets of old. This is why God has given us teachings from prophetic messages from these old time prophets, because he wants us to have the foundation of the old prophets because he's going to build the new temple based off the old prophetic um, testaments and teachings, the original doctrine and the original teachings of the old prophets. That's what the new temple is going to be. The foundation is going to be built off of. So the Holy Spirit, it makes absolute perfect sense why he's, some of us are in the book of Zechariah. Some of us have been in the book of Isaiah. Many of us are in the books of the prophets for a reason. Um, the, the, let's see, the, what's the next one? The 10th thing he says is let your hands be strong. This encouraging command was for those who had heard the words of the prophets in the day the foundation was laid for the house of the Lord of hosts. The foundation was set more than 15 years before. Though they faced lack of resources, which is, uh, he says that there will be no wages for man. And, and though they're going to face opposition, he says there won't be, there will be no peace from the enemy. God wants them to find strength for the work. Listen, we see it now. This is this was written hundreds of thousands, uh, hundreds of years of years ago, and yet it may it pertains to what we're dealing with right now. He said that there's going to be. Look at what he says. Though they though they face lack of resources, 
He said there would be no wages for man, right? Then he says, no peace from the enemy. We got that right now. They're threatening with nuclear war. They're threatening with, even with the presidential debates, they're threatening with um, these different um, Congress, these laws and stuff. They're threatening your, they, thre they threaten you with this vaccine. You, you, you lose your place if you're in military, you lose your job if you're here and you lose your job if you're there. And there, if, he said there would be no peace from the enemy and there would, there would be no wages for man. There's no work. So man can't make what he needs to survive. The farmers are not producing. The, a lot of farmers said that their wheat did not grow this season. There's no wheat. So the, the bread is limited. They're saying that they have no water to, to feed their livestock. It's, I mean, if you listen to the testimony of farmers, it's scary stuff. Um, and then they're talking about the trains, you know, this, this, this railroad strike, if they go on a strike, the, the foods to our stores will be even more limited. It'll be a hyperinflation. So, right, there's all this stuff going on, but the Lord is saying, even while all of that is going on, I'm going to help you find strength to work. I'm going to help you find strength for the work, for the kingdom work. You're not going to be so boggled down with all that you see that you can't do my stuff. He said, you're going to have strength for my work. So let your hands be strong. This is why he says, let me train your hands for war and your fingers for battle. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory be to God. He says, because this is his promise. Your hands are going to be strong to still push and persevere in kingdom business, even when outside look like it's going to hell in a handbasket. Hallelujah. Uh, the 12th thing he says, or the 11th thing he says is, the Lord of hosts promises not to deal with the remnant in the same way as the former. Your seed shall be prosperous. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah, Jesus. Whenever the Lord promised you something, remember there's over 5,000 promises in the word of God. All you got to do is find a couple and memorize them and stand on them. His word will not return unto you void. It will finish what it was sent out to accomplish. So. There's one of his promises. He promises not to deal with you, the remnant, in the same way he dealt with the former. He promises us that. In fact, he says your seed will even be prosperous. Hallelujah. Uh, the 12th Glory. thing he says, hallelujah. The 12th thing he says is, I thought to punish you with your forefathers who provoked me to wrath, says the Lord of hosts. The Lord of hosts says, I have every right to inflict you with my wrath. But because I'm who I am and because I said I'm gonna do what I said I'm gonna do, I will not do this thing to you. I will not do this thing. I will not provoke you. And he reiterates it again in verse 13. The Lord of hosts reiterates, said, thus saith the Lord of hosts. Boom, this is why you are about to rejoice in a fast because for one, you're not gonna be judged like the former, but you're going to have a new grace for the remnant. Hallelujah. You're going to have strength for the, for the fight. You're going to have strength in your hands to work the kingdom of the Lord. You're not going to be faced with a lack of resources, even though everyone around you is having a lack of resources. You're not going to be able to um, miss out on any wages because there's no resource. There, God's going to provide. Hallelujah. And I'm going to release a... a a word that the Lord gave me regarding that he is going to provide, that he showed me, hallelujah. And so he says, the Lord of hosts promises not to deal with the remnant in the same way. He promises that you are going to have, um, you know, what, not what the former had, but you're going to have what the remnant is supposed to have, you're, even though they provoked him to wrath. The 13th time where Zechariah says the Lord of hosts, he says the Lord, um, the Lord of hosts, uh, will do it. Thus says the Lord of hosts. The 14th thing he says, the Lord of hosts is speaking. The Lord of hosts is talking to you. When you see scriptures like this, and it's, it's somewhat rare because usually he's speaking through someone. And even here, he's speaking through the prophet Zechariah, but it's like Zechariah decreased and the Lord increased and the Lord just took over Zechariah's hands, his mouth, his body, and just began to speak this. He, 
the Holy Spirit, the Lord spoke Zechariah 8 to us. He is talking about himself. He is reiterating who this is. He wants you to make no mistake. This is not Zechariah, but this is the Lord of hosts. I want you to make no mistake. This is not just a prophecy, but I am declaring it. I am the thus saith the Lord. I am speaking. And he says us the 14th time, I'm speaking. He wants you, he wants the reader to stay focused. Don't lose sidetrack. Don't lose thought. Stay focused. Know that it's him speaking. The Lord of hosts is speaking. Therefore, listen listen this is why we're doing this five day fast because we want to hear we want to hear the instructions because something is coming and i'm gonna share i'm gonna reveal to y'all what i saw something is coming and it's not going to be long it's going to be an emergency it's going to be a 911 emergency and we're going to need the holy spirit for provision but he wants us to listen to get instruction um there shall be a fast in the fourth fifth seventh and tenth months for the gladness of the people he says um but they're going to be feasting. So they're not even going to fast the way, you know, they ought to or the way he declared them to because they're too busy making a feast out of the fast. That's not what you do. So pay attention to even how he gives you instructions on how to fast, even on how he tells you how to fast, what to do, what your fast should be. Don't make a feast out of it, still doing things you like to do. That's not a fast. Make sure you're reading. Make sure you're praying. Make sure you're on your knees. Make sure you're cleaning up and getting organized. This is the stuff that you do while you're fasting. Stay off the phone. You know, cut the television. I'll put on some praise and worship. Clean up. Get organized. Um, get that filth and that mess cleaned out. Take that trash out. Get, you know, get organized. Get yourself stocked up. Don't splurge on useless, vain stuff. But, but you know, gather what he's telling you to gather. Get before him and listen for instructions. Take notes right there. That's how you fast. You proclaim a solemn fast. The 15th through the 18th thing that he says. I'm going to go back to the scripture. And let's read it. The last few things that he says is in verse 20 through verse um, 22. I mean, 23. And this is what he says. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. It shall yet come to pass that there shall come people. Listen, listen, listen. There, there shall come people and the inhabitants of many cities and the inhabitants of one city shall go to another saying, let us go speedily to pray. Let's rush. Let's hurry up. Let's go. Let's go speedily to pray before the Lord. And to seek the Lord of hosts. That's the second time that he does that. So that's saying the Lord of hosts. That's that's saying the Lord of hosts. <laughs> um, I will go also. Yea, many people and strong nations shall come to seek the Lord of hosts. That's the third time. In Jerusalem and to pray before the Lord. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. That's four times in verse 20 to verse 23, 15 through 18th time that he says it in four verses, three verses. He says it four times. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, in those days it shall come to pass. In those days, whose days? Who's Zechariah talking about? The latter half of Zechariah is future prophecy. The uh, chapters one through seven prophecies, mostly all of them came to pass. The latter half of Zechariah is our days. In those days, in our days. Now, in other words, it shall come to pass that 10 men shall take hold out of all languages of the nations, even shall take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew, saying, we will go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. The Lord is saying, in other words, we are about to see a flock of people like never before. I believe we are already seeing them. Them immigrants coming at the border, we don't know why they're coming, but the Lord does. The Lord knows why they're coming and there's a reason they're being allowed to come. There's a reason there's a breach at the wall so they can get in. Nothing happens without God's permission. Nobody is set up without the Lord's permission. Nobody is taken down without the Lord's permission. He has to declare a thing and then man can do it. So there is a reason that these nations are coming with all these different languages they are flocking to where there's safety. They are flocking to where there are men who can pray. 
They are flocking. In fact, he said, when they come, they're going to say, listen, let's go speedily and go pray with these people. Let's listen, y'all listen. I don't know if y'all y'all caught this revelation. These immigrants are coming to the United States. The United States is the only nation, the only country that is known for being most, uh, we have a high number of being a Bible or uh, you know religious b- believing Christians. We are rated the only nation high, high for Christian believers. All these other nations around us are you know pretty much non-believers. They believe in different things. We are what you call the Christians. So this is why all these, because I always ask the Lord, why are these people not leaving their country to go to somebody else's country? Why do they keep trying to come here? The Lord says, this is where Christ is. He said, despite all the rebellion, despite all um, the disobedience and the idolatry, the bulk of this land is built, is built off and still stands because of believers' faith. This is a faith-based nation. And so because we got people praying, because we recognize the Lord God in most things, if not all things, um, people are flocking here and they don't even know why. They think it's because we got the resources. We don't. They think because we they're going to be free. They not. They think because they're going to get all this stuff. They really don't know God has a bigger plan. They're coming here. And when they get here, they're going to get connected with somebody that pray. Next thing you know, they're going to be speedily ready to pray too. They're going to, and look what he says. Look how he closes this, this divine chapter. He says, yes, yay, many people and strong nations shall come to seek the Lord of hosts in Jerusalem and to pray before the Lord. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, in those days it shall come to pass that 10 men shall take hold out of all languages of the nations, even shall take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew saying, we will go with you. For we have heard, somebody's been talking at the border. Somebody's been talking in the camp. Somebody's been talking about what about the God that's in this nation. Somebody's been talking. Just like Rahab, the harlot, the people, were, the men were talking amongst where she was. And when she saw Joshua, she said, for I have heard about your God. I know who you are. I know about the God you said. Come on, y'all. come on. I've heard about your God. I've heard about the God of, 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 of the Jews. I've heard about the I've heard about this God, Yahshua. I, tell me about him. Ooh, we're going to hold on to your skirt. They're going to be so close to you. It's going to be like they're holding on to your skirt. <laughs> Come on. Hallelujah, Jesus. I get excited about this word, y'all. I get so excited. It's, it's, uh, it's just so refreshing. It's like the anointing just takes over me. I get so excited. The Lord says, these people are going to come. Y'all keep talking about why these people come, why these people come. And look, begin to pray. Begin to get on your knees. Begin to ask the Lord, what are these? What these be? That's what Zechariah does. That's what he, he's been doing since chapter one of Zechariah. The whole book. He's, Lord, what these be? What these come to do? So every time you see his name in chapter eight, say his name. Say his name. Hallelujah. Say his name. Hallelujah, Jesus. The nations are flocking to the anointed ones. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Zechariah, if y'all did not know, um, even though there's there's many different spellings in the Bible, you know, the Hebrew spelling and then in the New Testament, it kind of switches up a little bit. It's still talking about Zechariah and the Hebrew origin means God remembers. Chapter eight is about God remembering that there's a remnant of people that he has set to the side that he is going to use. And in spite of our forefathers sins and our forefathers mistakes, he's not going to punish us with their wrath. The wrath that was meant for that generation is not going to be for this generation. There's going to be a grace. There's going to be a level of um, strength in your hands so that you can still do kingdom work even when all around you is falling apart. Hallelujah, Jesus. God remembers. Zechariah, God remembers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Be, God be glory. God be praise. Zechariah 8, 9 to 17. Hallelujah. He says, there, Zechariah 8 is encouragement. It's encouragement for the present. It's not just something looking at for the Jews, for Jerusalem, for Israel, for Judah. It's for the remnant. Notice that he puts the remnant in there. We are the remnant. And the encouragement for the present. Although the previous prophecies in Zechariah 8, 1 through 8, 
will only find their fulfillment in the establishment of Christ's kingdom on earth. The prophet does have an accompanying word of encouragement for the people of his generation. And from these prophecies, a blessed elixir of consolation and encouragement can be drawn by his hard-pressed country uh, men. Hopes for the future can, can distill inspiration for the present trials and tribulations, which the struggling restored community must overcome. We, we are already, not just as uh, United States citizens, but even as church kingdom citizens. I, I say I'm a conservative. I'm kingdom conservative. People ask me, what, who are you? What are you? I'm a kingdom conservative. I, look, I'm straight holiness. You know, when you're a prophet of God, you all, your message is always be holy, be holy, be holy. <laughs> just look, just be holy. That's, that's your message. Um, be holy. And so um, raising that standard for my household, for my life, and for those around me, look, just live holy, just be holy. Um, there is a, we are still in a community of believers and a community as a whole, as the United States whole, that is struggling to overcome from mess that man, man, men has put us in. And so while we're, this is, this is the, this is the situation in Zechariah's day. And it's no coincidence that Zechariah is prophesying not only about that circumstance, but he's prophesying about a similar circumstance in a future tense prophecy. That is unique. And so we are living in this future tense prophecy and we're living in a community that is struggling to be restored from inflation, from just oh, hyperinflation, warnings of hyperinflation, rumors of wars, all the stuff that, that the Bible in the New Testament prophesied. But there are three examples in Zechariah 8 that contrast um, an illustration or a comparison, if you will. The first thing that Zechariah 8 talks about is unfruitful labor, how the unfruitful labor is going to affect both man and animals, man and beasts. We see that now. A lot of farmers can't farm. Their crops um, are not growing. A lot of people are saying that they're, now how come farmers on the east, farmers on the west, farmers on the north, farmers on the south, all talking about their wheat did not grow. That's, that's like a national problem. It's not just in some farmers, 10% of farmers, some over here, some over there. No, their wheat did not grow. It just did not grow. Um, the barley, you know, not good. There's not enough to sell and to ship, but there was just enough. Get this, just enough. I seen one of the farmers, um, I was watching this, the, this documentary, the farmer, she was plucking her soybeans and saving them. She only had enough to can and to, she was canning and she was um, putting stuff in jars, just enough for her household, just enough for her family. The Lord did not make her produce enough for the world, for the masses, but he gave her just enough for her to sustain her. And so I thought that was really interesting. I said, Lord, you got to talk to me, talk to me while I'm watching this stuff. So first he says, there's going to be an unfruitful labor that's going to affect both man and beast. We see that now. So, so little was being produced that it did not pay the labor of man or beast. Many people have had to sell their livestock because they cannot afford help, you know, farm help to keep and raise and tend to the um, livestock, or, nor could they afford the water, the well to, to water the livestock. And so they've had, they've lost money. They've had to get rid of their help that there was not enough labor to to pay wages. This is what Zechariah 8 is talking about, not enough to pay wages. Um, we see that now. Isn't that amazing? And then he says, the second thing, there's going to be crime in the streets and it's going to be rampant. Don't we see that now, y'all? Isn't this amazing that you can read Zechariah 8 and say, Lord, you sure this, you sure this not talking about July 2022? <laughs> Look, you sure you, you sure he wasn't prophesying July 22? But it's the same thing. He prophesied about crime being in the streets, being rampant, how it would be unsafe to go about one's business. We see that every day on the news. Somebody's business um, being vandalized, set on fire. You know, it's just terrible. Uh, the man they showed on, on the news ran over. They, I mean, they hunted that man down, ran him over, and then robbed him while he was unconscious. What kind of foolery? What kind of evil? was released out of that sir we already knew it was going to release 
I'm getting ahead of myself. We already knew CERN. We already knew that they would open up them portals, that them demons was going to come. And, and them demons are attracted to the thoughts and the imaginations of unsaved people. So if you already didn't know the Lord and you already been wrestling in your mind or you've been fantasizing about what it would be like to run somebody over and then rob them, guess what? They did it. If you've already been unsaved and in your mind, you've already been wondering, I wonder, gee, I wonder what it would be like to pull out a knife at a rally and stab one of the governors or stab one of the men. Look, that already happened. Oh, no, no. People's wildest imagination. This is what uh, the, the, the scientist says is going to happen. What, whatever you thought, whatever, whatever you think is going to be amplified when they open up these CERN portals. It's amplified now. I, somebody sitting up there wondered, I wonder what it would be like to blow up or to, to, to shoot up an um, a elementary school. And guess what? That thing opened up seven, and it, it was drawn to that person's thoughts and imagination. And guess what? Somebody went and did it. Somebody, somebody somewhere was imagining, I wonder what it would be like to get a 10-year-old pregnant. And guess what? That thing opened up. And all this stuff happened after CERN opened up. Somebody went and did it. Y'all crime in the streets is rampant but guess what the lord says even though travel will be dangerous they're already limiting travels they said if you don't book if you plan on traveling for the holidays you better book it now because it's going to be limited um flights travel is going to be dangerous because of the adversary they've stolen all the peace adversary has stolen all the peace the safety tranquility and security from society ezra prophesied this ezra chapter 4 verse 1 through 5 Third, it says not only oppression from the enemy outside in the countryside too. We're not just being um, afflicted from outside foreigners and, and, and these people coming over here raping and bringing fentanyl, bringing drugs with them and crossing this border. We also got trouble from our own government within our own presidential um, office uh, cabinet. We've got in-house trouble, conflict within the community. This side versus this side. Y'all know that's how the bloods and the crips, red and blue. We got bloods and crips in the White House. We got reds and blues going at it every day. Um, social relationships are strained. Civil and interpersonal relationships are where strife and contention are filled. All of that is going on now, even though Zachariah prophesied it. So that's then. This is now. Now, how can we apply this now? Well. During Zachariah's time, it was a time of anxiety and strain because things were going from bad to worse. Things are going from bad to worse now. They're talking about inflation, recession. Now they're talking, they're starting to use words like hyperinflation, no electric, blackouts. They're starting to use words like that. It's going from bad to worse. But rather than being helpful um, towards one another and having a spirit of community that would develop out um, restoring the temple, they had, they had developed in fighting instead. They were fighting. And so now the Lord is wanting us, this is why a couple of weeks ago, the Lord said, tell the people community, fellowship. This is not the time to say, I'm not calling in on Zoom tonight. This is not the time to say, I'm not going to Bible study tonight. This is not time to say, I'm not going to church today. This is not time to say, I'm not fellowship and I'm not calling my prayer partner. This is not that time. This is not that season. This is the season where we got to build up a community. We got to build it up, y'all. We got to start witnessing, testifying. Um, I was witnessing to one of my coworkers. I was hoping she was, um, you know, different ones would call in. I was hoping she would call in, but she asked me, she said, is this the number every every week? I said, yes, it is. Yes, ma'am. She said, I have not been in church since the pandemic. I do not have a church home. And it was, it was nothing but the grace of God. Let me tell you how the Lord worked it out. He told me before I left to go to work, put some cards in my pocket. I grabbed like two or three, put them in my pocket and went on. And right, we was talking, we talked for a right good, you know, because when one come in, you got to fill in the other one. So I was relieving her. And as I was coming in, me and her, we talked for a long time. And somehow we got on the, we got on church. I think because I had my shirt on, my t-shirt that said God's mouthpiece. And she said, I see you every day. You always got one of them shirts on. I, start, I said, here, this, you go ahead and order you one. I customize it for you. Tell me what you want. She was like, really? I said, yeah. And I said, you got a church home? We just started talking. I said, here, here go my card. It got the website on there. It got the boutique on there. It got the uh, uh, Wednesday night on there. And this everything's the same every week. She said, I, she said, okay. So I'm hoping that 
my testifying, my witnessing is going to grow in our community because the Lord is wanting us to commune, y'all. He's wanting us to commune. Um, he doesn't want us fighting. He doesn't want us nitpicking and putting our mouth on people. Twice, I, ha I had to rebuke my friend to that. Twice. I said, listen, don't be, don't be speaking that on me. Don't be speaking that on your daughter. Oh, my daughter's going to get in an accident. She rides. I said, don't you, you better renounce that because there is power in this thing right here. Your child will be in an accident. You be crying, snobbing, talking about woe is me, pray with me. And I'm going to say, no, you spoke it. And she said, oh, Lord, forgive me. She took it back. Lord, forgive me. I'm not playing with nobody today. Look, don't be speaking no curse on nobody while you with me. Lord, then that thing be on my conscience all night. Um, so the Lord wants us to commune. He wants us to um, not fight, not talk about, not tear down, but he wants us to build because this is the time now where the outside community walls is crumbling, but the wall of the church should be being built. He said, your hands are going to be strong to do the kingdom work. Um, he says, God is going to chastise his people for getting their priorities wrong. God is going to get us because he is providing provision. 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 And so when we start talking about, oh, I'm going to get my shoes and I'm going to get this. And, and the Lord is saying, no, I need you. To, look, the Lord gave me a strategy. I'm going to share in a couple of minutes. He gave me a strategy. But God is saying, I'm going to chastise you if you don't do what I'm saying, because you're going to need this. You may not think it's coming, but you're going to need this. Um, you're going to need this plan. So those days must have must have been evil and discouraging. Why? Simply because God's people did not put God and his work of temple building as their first priority. I don't care what it looks like on the news. I don't care what it looks like on the corner of your block. I don't care what it looks like when you're riding down the street. You still got to be about kingdom business. You still got to be about kingdom business. I see a lot of people, they send out these group messages talking about they're canceling their Bible study. They cancel, cancel. cancel. I'm like, every other week y'all cancel. Good God Almighty. How do you ever get anything done when you cancel, cancel, cancel? Look, I will teach sick. Y'all know it. I will teach exhausted. I will teach tired. I'm off literally seven hours of sleep right now. That's all I got. <laughs> Um, just because kingdom business is your first priority. When it is your first priority, God will take care of everything. Stuff that should have been a hindrance, stuff should, that should not have panned out for you will fall through. We, we, we too um, may be tempted to slow down our work for God. There are many reasons people aren't responding to the call of God. There are many reasons people are not working and doing what they're supposed to do in the kingdom because some of us are just emotionally or physically drained. Um, the workers are unresponsive. The work is too difficult. You don't have the support. I will teach to one. I would look, I don't care if nobody on here. I'll just record it and let whoever get it later, get it later. I teach like somebody was on here. Listen, it, you... <laughs> It's not about that. It's about being content in where God has called you and being obedient. People don't appreciate our efforts. So sometimes we don't, we're not consistent. But look, if you, if you learn to take on the prayer language of Nehemiah, Nehemiah said, Lord, you remember what I did today. You take note of the people that I took care of because they're your people. He didn't want accolades from the world or from man. He wanted to make sure God wrote down in the books because remember in the scripture it says, and the books were open. It's not even about your name being in the last book of life at this point. It's about the books being open and what has he written about you? Sometimes if you feel like somebody's watching you, it's not always a demon. Sometimes God has assigned angels to take report of what you're doing. And so sometimes you're at ease. You're not, it's like you know somebody's watching you, but you're not scared. That's because it's probably an angelic being sitting up there in the corner. And if your eyes and ears are open and you're being obedient, you might get a, a Mary encounter and the angel will talk to you. You might get an Elizabeth encounter and the angel will talk to you. Um, so let God's promises about the future encourage you. He knows what the results of our labors will be. See your labors from God's perspective and continue faithfully working for him. Um, that's 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 about it from Zechariah chapter eight. Look, it's not about all that you see happening in the streets. It's about doing it and, and faithfully and being encouraged, knowing that the future, knowing that the Lord says, I will visit them. I will visit the remnant and I will not treat them 
uh, with wrath. Oh, hallelujah. So y'all know I got a prophetic word for you. If y'all did not see my video on um, fairies, go back and watch it. If you have ever had dreams of fairies, and you're not sure what they are, go back and watch it. But this is something completely different. The Lord showed me, this was five days after I, no, four days after I saw the fairy, fairies. Um, the Lord showed me, I was in my car, me and my daughter, we was in, our, we was in my car, and all of a sudden, people started running, and I knew that they were not saved. They, these were worldly people, because it was like there was a bar in the dream. I, I didn't see the bar, but I just had this knowing, this sense that there was a bar that these people were running out of. They were just trying to run to safety out of this bar, and I knew something was coming big but I didn't know what it was. I, but I had enough unction to know, oh my gosh, I got to get prepared. I got to get some provision. And so I told my daughter, I'll be right back. I said, you see that ATM? I got to use the ATM and I'll be right back. And so I could see where she was kind of outside of the car looking to see where I went. And I said, get back in the car, get back in the car. And I, I had this debt, I had my debit card in my hand and I stuck it in the ATM machine and all of a sudden y'all, uh, it started raining fire. It started like just fire, brimstone, just, it was like some type of firestorm and it was, it was big and it was just falling down, right? And so um, the, 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 this fire was falling down to the ground and I said, oh my God, <laughs> like the people that was running out of these bars, they like, it was hitting them. And here I was in the middle of this storm, this firestorm, trying to get money out of an ATM machine. <laughs> and so I, my car was moving slow. It was like somebody pushed paws on the ATM machine. And I was steady tapping and pushing and pushing the buttons. Like, come on. At this point, I didn't even want the money. I just wanted my car back so I could get back in the car. And it was going so slow. I remember in the dream, it would not let me back up. It would not let me cancel or go back. So I had to finish the process. So I put my password in. I typed these numbers in on the on the keypad, put my numbers in, and it was processing so slow. And I'm looking up and I'm like, oh my gosh, this fire. I'm just looking, it, it just looked like something out of a science fiction sci-fi movie. And I'm just like, oh my goodness, my car is, is taking so long. Y'all, soon as I looked down at the ATM machine, there was a receipt, like a white paper, a receipt, and it had a stack of $20 bills inside of it, just sitting there. And so I picked it up and I said, oh my, I said, well, this is enough right here. You know, this is more than enough that, of what I need. I can cancel. I don't need, I was only getting a $20 bill. I was only getting $20 out of the drink. And here I am with a receipt full of 20s. I don't know how much it was, but I just know I saw the 20s. They were folded up individually inside this um receipt and so i was like i don't even need this twenty dollars as soon as i said i don't even need this twenty dollars the twenty dollars came out real slow so i grabbed the twenty dollars i never folded it with the other 20s I, I had it like um on top of it i had it like just you know on top of it and i had the receipt and i had the money i had to, and i had my card all in one hand and um it was like real uh strategic how i how i held everything and so I took off running back to the car, closed the door. And when I didn't realize how much money it was, I sat down and I was looking at the money, looking at the $20 and the receipt. And I woke up. And so I had to really ponder. Now, this was the third dream that I had for the night. So this was the last of the three dreams I dreamt in one night. So I had to write all three dreams down. Now, the first two dreams was for people. I had to, I had to release those dreams to other people. But this one included me. And so I said, Lord, do I need to be saving some money? <laughs> you know, what's, what's coming? And I said, $20 sure wasn't enough. And he said, Matthew 6, 26, behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? This will be a supernatural provision and not flesh. So Whatever this judgment that's getting ready to hit our economy, I told, I swore, I said, I don't know. Maybe I need to get some money out of the uh, bank because 
they talk about cyber attacks and all this stuff. I said, maybe the ATM is not going to work. Maybe I need to have some cash on hand, you know, Lord. And then he, he said, it's not, he said, you only took out $20. That would not have helped you. But I had money already laid where I knew you would see it. But y'all, I did not see that money or the receipt until after I kept trying to push the thing. I just wanted to be done with it. But it would not let me back up. That's all of that is symbolic. The Lord is not going to allow whatever is coming to be easily reversed. You're going to have to go through this. There's going to be something that we're going to just have to go through. We're going to have to deal with it. Um, and it's going to affect the economy. It's going to affect the people. But it's going to affect non-believers uh, more than it would the church. Uh, this fire should have hit me. It did not. In fact, I was blessed in the midst of this fire, this rain fire. There was money sitting on the side for me to grab, for me to take. Uh, while everybody was running frantic, I was getting some money. And um, the Lord was saying, you won't be able to back up. You won't be able to go back. You won't be able to stop this oncoming fire, this thing that's coming. It's, and I don't think it's going to be a natural fire. I think it's going to be something that's going to burn pockets. It's going to burn it's going to take away from people in a way that it's going to, you, it's going to feel like somebody's burning you, like, like you've been burned from the government, been burned out of your wages. I mean, people are already feeling that now. They're, it's like 90% of their, their pay is going to food, going to gas, going to bills, going to the energy bills, going to your water bill. It, it's already feeling like your, your wages is being burned from you, but there's going to be some type of spiritual fire that is going to cause some chaos and if you're not listening for your instructions and you're not watching for the provision, you're going to miss it. And you're going to be one of those people running frantic, like, like a chicken with his head cut off because you don't know which way to go. You don't know where to, what to do. There's going to be this, this type of storm that the Holy Spirit is speaking like Zechariah 8. It's going to be thus saith the Lord of hosts. It's going to be so dramatic that the only thing people can say is the people who, who don't know God are going to say it's a freak of nature. But people who know the works of the Lord are going to say, that was the hand of God. That was the hand of the Lord. You can't tell me that wasn't the hand of the Lord. And even in the midst of it, the Lord's going to, I don't know if you're going to find money in, around the house, find money in your pockets. You're going, But there's going to be some type of money that's just going to be sitting there for you to grab. Ooh, oh, shit, can I buy? Hallelujah. There's going to be provision. It's going to be supernatural provision, not natural provision. That little $20 couldn't help nobody. You might as well tithe that. If you all, if all you got is twenty dollars, you might as well tithe it because you can't pay. You can't pay no bills with that. That was nothing. And so, um, you know, y'all know we go to Dollar Tree and we spend about twenty five, thirty dollars easy in Dollar Tree. So that twenty dollars was not provision, but the Lord had provision for me where I no longer needed twenty dollars. I no longer wanted it anyway when I seen that fire. But had I got scared, and I'm telling you, if it wasn't for me needing my card back, I probably would have been you know, uh, freaking out, but I wanted, I waited and, and went through the process because I wanted my card back. And so I believe the Lord, though we may, we're human, we may get in our flesh. We may get a little terrified. We may get a little scared. There's going to be something he's going to use to keep us grounded. For me, it was that card. I was like, look, I need my card. So there's going to be something that's going to keep you from getting completely frantic and scared and, 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 and scary, but it's going to be something that's going to keep you where you're supposed to be. Look for these signs. Look for these clues. Look for these parables. Look for these Psalms and Proverbs that the Lord is going to be singing and saying and speaking and showing you and revealing to you because he's talking in many ways. Uh, the number 20 is twice 10. It's 10 twice. And it conveys a meaning of a complete or perfect waiting period. The 20, the 20 was symbolic to me waiting Y'all, check this out. I was waiting for my card. I wasn't waiting on that $20. And so the 20, I'm thinking, Lord, why the 20? The $20 represents the waiting period. Y'all, we've been waiting. We've been waiting for this. Whatever is coming, we've been waiting for this for a long time. Jacob waited 20 years for Rachel. Y'all know the story. The children of Israel, 20 years waiting to be free from JB. Y'all know the story. The Philistines in the days of Samuel the prophet battled and overcame Israel, taking the Ark of the Covenant back to their land. They, look, Israel had to wait at least 20 years before the Ark would be moved again. The scriptures record at least 20 separate messages. Get this, this would, this would flip me out. 
there are there are at least 20 separate messages conveyed while a person is sleeping in a dream. Uh, God warned Abimelech not to go near Abraham's wife, verse three of Genesis chapter 20. Jacob dreamed, and this is just a couple of the ones I found. There's a whole long list of them. Jacob dreams of a ladder to heaven in uh, chapter 28, verse 12, and is told in the second one to leave his employer, 31 and 10. Jacob's employer Laban is warned in a dream to leave the patriarch alone. Y'all, it's so much about this 20. The 20 and, and the fact that I had to wait for my card to come out represents a waiting period. The ATM in itself spiritually represents a place of provision. You're, you're getting money so that you can make things happen. You can do things. You can be without lack. So the ATM represents a spiritual um, money, spiritual money. God is going to give you spiritual provision. Hallelujah. So if you're one, you've been waiting, you've been seeking, you've been knocking, you've been asking the Lord for provision. You've been asking the Lord to reveal to you um, finances, to complete some tasks, to, to do some things spiritual provision this the waiting period is over i told y'all early in the year the lord said the second half of this year was going to be blessings well the blessings are here they're there for the taking you can have it i had three dreams of a new house my daughter last night dreamt we had a new car it's new stuff Yo, you better pull your stuff down you better get your stuff <laughs> hallelujah jesus Y'all know what fire represents, especially fire that's falling from the sky represents fire and brimstone. That represents judgment. We don't need to look that up. We don't need to know, look all through the scripture. Judgment. Guys are about to pronounce some type of judgment and, and those who are not saved, those who are not sealed in the number are going to be hit hard. But God's going to provide for us. You know, I know a lot of private businesses, small businesses, especially Christian businesses that are there, they're no more. And my little stuff is still flourishing, still up and running, and I'm still able to afford to have it by the grace of God. I mean, when he gives me clients, he gives me people that don't just buy one or two. They buy in bulk. They get stuff for the family, for the church. Look, they buy. And that sustains me until the next big buyer. So I'm just blessed. Y'all, Look, I want y'all to find some Christian businesses. Help them out. Find some Christian businesses too, if you're able to look, get, find some Christian businesses. Just say, look, the Lord wanted me to sow into you. The Lord, just even if you, let me tell you something, what it does to people that are business owners that are trying to be kingdom entrepreneurs, because it's hard out here. If you got one person that send you a message and say, the Lord said for me to sow into your business, for me to buy something from your business, to remind to remind you that he has not forgotten your business, that your business is still um, on his mind. That in itself, whether you buy anything or not, the fact that the Lord told someone about their business is enough for me. Maybe the Lord got my business on his mind. Really? You know, <laughs> it's encouraging. It's edifying. It's uplifting. And God will bless you for edifying someone else. Find y'all some Christian businesses and get, get some seeds in the ground. Hallelujah. Who's this? I got a, um, uh -uh. I can't deal with that right now. I can't deal with that. Um, nope. Can't deal with that. Uh, <laughs> let's do our communion, y'all. Y'all got y'all communion cups. Y'all know it's the last Wednesday of the month. Y'all started y'all fast, y'all corporate fast the last five days. It's amazing how the Lord's going to end the five-day fast with um, International Night of Prayer on Saturday and then the, the master class on, on Sunday. And then we're going into the first three days of our first week. God is about to bless us. Y'all better pull down these blessings. I'm excited. Pull down these blessings. Holy Spirit is speaking. Holy Spirit is talking. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Uh-oh. I don't went too fast. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. That, look, y'all, the whole house. We look, even Sam, Sam be dreaming, y'all. Sam be <laughs> Sam be kicking. <laughs> I'll be like, what in the world? He must be dreaming. What you over there dreaming? <laughs> Poor dog. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord God, we thank you. We thank you, Jesus. 
We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Get your, get your, get your uh, communion. Get your, uh, or your juice or your water. Y'all know it's hard to find natural spring water. Y'all better be careful. Don't buy that. Um, what's that stuff called? Don't buy that um, recycled water. What is it called? What is it called, y'all? Not the natural spring water, but the... Um, Purified. Yeah, that. Don't buy that. Don't buy that stuff. That's why it's stocked up. Don't buy it. That stuff ain't no good. If, if you're going to buy purified water, you might as well get your water out the toilet. Go boil it and put it in your refrigerator if you're going to do all that because that purified water is <laughs> the devil. <laughs> Get you some natural spring water. Get you some spring water if you can. Stock up on spring water. Stock up. Stock up. Stock up. Be praying. For yes. Uh, about a month ago, you told me to pray for my water. And I did for day or two and I forgot to do it. And that's why I had the problem yesterday with my bowels. Remember? Mm -mm. Because I hadn't been praying on my water. So it's very important everybody pray for the water. And not just the water, but the food also because of the HMO. Mm. The GMO. I mean GMO. Genetically modified. Oh yeah, y'all, Miss Helen. Three three days in a, three different occasions, she had bananas that when she broke it open was pulsating. It was moving. <laughs> I said, "Ooh, I ain't never seen nothing like that." She said it was pulsating. It was it was moving. And I think um, Dr. Keenan Bridges he had a dream that he did a live video on where he saw the Leviathan wrapped around the building and it was pulsating. Y'all, that's that Paul Satan spirit wrapping around our foods and stuff. Pray, break it off. Ask the Holy Spirit. Y'all, it goes back to that demon coming out of the refrigerator. Lord, can I eat this? Is this safe? Lord Jesus, um, I pray over this food. Father, let it be manna from heaven, purified, whatever was meant for my demise, whatever was meant for uh, my evil. Lord, you turned around for my good in Christ Jesus' name. Um, th that's what y'all got to do. Pray over it. Pray, just pray, pray over it. Ask Holy Spirit, can I have this? Hallelujah. So let's take our communion. Let's meditate on the Holy Spirit. Thank him for his provision. Thank him for his safety. Thank him for his protection. Thank him for his, um, his plans to, to prosper us, not to harm us. Hallelujah. First Corinthians 11, 23 to 32 says, for I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. And after the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you. Hallelujah. And many sleep. For if we could judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with Hallelujah. This is so, so befitting because though the, the, the Lord is about to judge the world, we will not be condemned with the Lord, but we will be chastened um, by the Lord, but not in the world. So take your bread and just begin to meditate in your heart on that word. He says, when he had given thanks, we break it. But look, look at the beginning. 
the same night when Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and gave thanks. So no matter who betray you, no matter who's not there for you, no matter who has hurt you, no matter who is not supporting you, you give God thanks anyway. So Father, uh, we, we ask that you bless these elements that we are about to partake of for your, your supper and for your communion. Father, I ask that you will give us a, a merry heart that no matter who comes against us, no matter who harms or tries to hurt us, Father, that we will still glorify you even in our affliction, even in our transgression, even in our hurts, we will still give you glory and we will still give you thanks because you are ours and we are yours. So Father, bless these elements that they may be considered holy, taken on holy ground in Jesus' name, amen. And when he has given thanks, he break it and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after the same manner also he took the cup. And when he has supped, saying, This this cup is the new testament in my blood, this do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. You may drink. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you for fresh communion cups. Fresh communion cups. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory be to God. Glory be to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Y'all don't be having no, if you got stale communion, you ain't been taking communion as often as you should. Ain't no way your communion should be getting so doggone stale. Lord Jesus. I'm going to need you to get a new batch, and I'm going to need you to take it often, as often as you remember. <laughs> look, I don't even take communion at church no more. I'll be like, I'll take it when I get home. I look. <laughs> That's so silly. Hallelujah. Thanks for tuning in, y'all. Thank you. I love you. I pray that God has been revealing himself to you. Have y'all been having angelic visitations, dreams of uh, pregnancies and dreams of babies? Have y'all been, has this stuff been uh, resonating in your, in your dreams and stuff? Has God been speaking to you? Hallelujah. Somebody say yes. Yes. Oh, you, hallelujah. So God be praised. God is speaking. And when people say God is speaking, say, what he's saying? <laughs> Ask him what he's saying. I got the spirit of laughter on me, y'all. What he's saying? Everybody was talking about he's speaking. What were he saying? <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. But y'all have a good night. I pray that you have a blessed week. I pray that your fast, look, my first day of fast was rough. The enemy tried to put a headache on me. And I knew that wasn't nothing but the devil. Um, so I pray strength. If he if he's trying to get me, I know he's trying to get y'all. So I pray strength over you, strength for the journey, strength for the task. Don't um, accept erroneous assignments. Accept kingdom assignments. God is going to strengthen you to do kingdom work. He's not going to strengthen you to do erroneous stuff. That's why you get burdened down, you get boggled down, you get tired. Um, lethargic and restless and you don't have no strength because he didn't give you strength to do somebody else's stuff. He gave you strength to do kingdom stuff. So y'all be blessed and I love you. Thank you. Love you. I love you too. Love you too, Miss Helen. Angel. Yes. I, the past few days I've been reading well, several books you know, I read Isaiah a lot, but the Lord has, has uh, in the past couple of days, brought it to my attention that, talking about the Christians, he said that the food, you would have food. So, uh, and then uh, in my prayers, the Lord has had me, you said that a while ago that the, that the reaper shall overtake the sower. And the Lord's had me under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And I was praying to to pray that I would pray that 
quote it over and over for three or four times and praise the Lord, thank him that the Christians are not going to have to worry about the food shortages and water shortages and and all of that because God's going to provide for us. He might have to do it supernaturally, but according to our faith, he's going to provide for us. And, yes. And uh, and and Isaiah says, I don't have was worded, but it, it said that the end of food um, was a sentence, and it was a dash, and it says about the, that they shall have food. Oh, that's how it was. They shall have food. And uh, I was reading the Amplified Bible, and uh, but it's in King James also. So uh, God will meet our needs when we are obedient to Him, and believe it. I like to say, find the Scripture and memorize. Stand on it. And, yeah, stand on it. Release your faith. See you having it. And you know the Scripture you're referring. The scripture you're referring to in Isaiah, I think that was Isaiah 26. He actually said the Lord of hosts will provide a banquet, will provide a feast. And in Isaiah 65, he says, uh, the Lord God says, my servants will eat and drink. So, yes. Hallelujah. And he also says, uh, about, talking about them, uh, messing about food so that they can control us putting stuff in it and everything. Uh, he also said that I shall not eat or if I shall eat or drink any deadly thing, it shall not it shall not harm. Yes, so right. That's a good scripture for us to stand on too. When it comes to our food, absolutely. But yeah. Isaiah 65, 13, y'all remember it, write it down. I love it because the Lord is clear. The Lord said, my servants will have drink, but you will not. My servants will eat, but you will not. Talking about the non, those who are not servants of Christ. My servants will eat. My servants will drink. And he said, but you won't. You will be hungry. You will be thirsty. But behold, my servants will rejoice. He said, and they will not be ashamed. Um, so he's specific about who's going to be fit, fulfilled and who won't be. So if you're a servant of the Lord, Prepare to be well taken care of. He, Matthew, he says he prepares for the fowls of the air. How much more will he prepare for you? And I'm just, them birds, <laughs> them birds. Uh, the Lord of hosts, he said, in, in, in this mountain shall the Lord of hosts make unto all people a feast of fat things. God is going to make, look, I can put on like 10 pounds. Well, I don't need to be made no more fat, okay? Look, I will make Hallelujah. you fat. Glory. Hallelujah. Yeah. I will put a feast up Hallelujah. in front of you, red wine of choice meat and fine. He said, I'm going to give you fine wine. Matter of fact, I'm going to give you, he said, it's going to be refined wine. Listen, that means you're going to have the good of the vine, the good of the grapes, the good, the fatness of, you're going to be fat, fed, and flourishing. Very good shit kind of a Hallelujah. 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 Thank you for that word, Miss Helen. Angel, also uh -huh. I couldn't get on on my cell phone tonight because it's on this real small 